<sighs> I've put it off long enough. Now I gotta do it. This is the CDI video. The Philips CDI was designed to be a home multimedia system that played movies and other types of interactive content, like encyclopedias, museum tours, business software, and edutainment programs. But somehow or another, it ended up also being used as a game console and had many games released for it. In fact, it was the first console to be able to play movies, albeit in a proprietary format. Long before the PS2 and the Xbox that could play DVD, but being the first at something doesn't mean you're the best at it, and the CDI is proof of that. Wait a minute, didn't I say that in the TurboGrafx CD review? God, I'm repeating myself. Next thing I'll be recycling jokes saying my dick has tank controls again. There was a lot of infighting and confusion about what Philips really wanted this thing to be. Half of the company wanted it to be a multimedia system, and the other half wanted it to be a game console. But the problem was, it was very underpowered, and the architecture was never designed to be a game system, but that didn't stop Philips from releasing games for it. Most of the games used FMV because that's what the system was best at, and to be fair, the video quality of the CDI FMVs was way better than what the Sega CD could do. Hell, I think my Motorola flip phone made better videos than the Sega CD. But yeah, Philips was putting a circle in a square hole trying to make the CDI play games, but play games it did, and we're gonna look at some of them. Now I know the urge you feel to drag the play bar until you see the games you really wanna see, and for those, they're getting a separate video, so be patient. It'll come in time. Now, you know what's even worse than the Philips CDI? CDI emulation. I swear, there are no decent emulators out there to play CDI content. There's like two that actually work, and I only got one to work, and it only works on a small list of games. It's called Same CDI in RetroArch, and it's basically a version of MAME set up to play CDI, and it only plays a fraction of the games. You see, the problem is, to play a lot of CDI content, you need an add-on called this DVC card. It had a codec which could read the proprietary video format that some CDI games had, and if you don't have it, the game won't play. And lots of the games I wanted to play for this video needed that card, and nobody has emulated it yet. So there's tons of CDI games that still can't be played unless you have the real hardware. So my review was going to be severely lacking in the amount of games I showed off, but then I found out that some of the CDI games I wanted to look at were released on, get ready for this, Steam. Yes, there are CDI games on Steam, four that I counted, and they play completely identical to their CDI counterparts. So, Steam saved the review. Now I have a bunch of games I can show y'all today. And we're gonna start it off with the game that gave me the idea to do this, because when I saw the title of this game, I knew I was in for a ride. Zombie Dinos from the Planet Zeltoid, which has a very catchy theme song. Dinos in the darkness, murder in their eyes. It's one that turns to trouble, brings me zombie fight. Let's kick some brain. Back to where they came from, back to where they came from. Let me tell you something, this stupid ass song has been stuck in my head ever since I started playing this game. I can fucking hear it in my sleep. Back to where they came from, back to where they came from, back to where they came from, back to where they came from! And I knew within 30 seconds that this was gonna be review material because of this guy. What are you looking at? I don't know, a rejected Muppet from the Dinosaur Show? Hey, you go get fucked in the butt. Okay, he doesn't say that, but that would be awesome. Go get yourself chased uku million light years across the galaxy. Wait a second, he's not a real dinosaur, is he? Nope. Chuck Testa. And see if you bring in your space buggy in one piece. See, we got problems, pal. You're telling me we're about to play a CDI game. They're right behind me. <laughs> what? Did you think I was kidding? Uh, Billy Mays here for the Big City Slider Station. So from hearing the title, Zombie Dinos from the Planet Zeltoid, what kind of game do you guess this would be? It almost sounds like a point and click adventure, doesn't it? Well, there is pointing and clicking involved, but would you have ever guessed this? You move on a grid, search for clues about a dinosaur you're trying to track down, and then you had to find out what dinosaur you're after, so you have to answer a bunch of dinosaur questions and look through a dinosaur encyclopedia 
there to find out? Well, you get the idea. It's an educational game. How educational, I don't know, because dinosaur lore changes all the time, and some of the information on this game might actually be outdated. You have to find out how big the dinosaur is, what it eats, if it runs in groups, a whole lot of stuff. Now guys, I'm not that well versed in dinosaurs. I don't know an Allosaurus from a Thesaurus. I'm a lot more familiar with what dinosaurs turn into. Motor oil. I can tell you which brand has the most lubricity, but I can't tell you if it's a T-Rex or not. What makes this game even worse is that you're timed. Every action you do moves the clock along, and if you don't find the dinosaur in time and locate it and find out what it is, it's game over. And then this happens. Dateline Chicago. Here in the Windy City, the news of the day is the presence of a living, breathing dinosaur identified by experts as an Ankosaurus. An Ankosaurus? I guess that's a dinosaur that's in pain. That's funny, fuck you. So after playing through this a couple of times, I realized something. It's always the same dinosaur. There's like different levels and each one has the same dinosaur each time. This one's got the Ankosaurus and another level's got a different one. It doesn't change what dinosaur you're going after after you game over. So you can game over, watch the cutscene, and listen to what kind of dinosaur it is, and cut out doing that whole part of trying to find out what the dino is. Then you've got all this extra time to just find it. Once you find the dinosaur, this goober head challenges you to a quiz. If these dinos three were to run at a pace, which of the contenders would place third in the race? Oh well, the Stegosaurus is the only one in here I've heard of. We got a Stewartsaurus in colon physics. Maybe that's a dinosaur with a huge oh, yeah. asshole. Well, I got all three questions right, and it was pure D luck. When you do, this thing kills this brain thing, and then this happens. You have done well, friend. Here, have a look at your own bright future. Everyone died! Good work, rocket scientist! That's one blob down, two to squish. Just don't get cocky on me now, huh? Oh, I missed the opportunity to make him say cock. Oh well, some other time and some other life. Anyway, that's the whole game. You just do this a few more times and you win. Not much of a game, not much of a game at all. In keeping with the dinosaur theme... That is one big pile of shit. I wonder where that dinosaur puppet is now. I wonder if it's rotting away like that Ninja Turtle suit. Next one we got is called Mystic Midway Rest in Pieces. Now there were two games called Mystic Midway and this is the first one. Or the first one I played. I really don't know which one is the first one. I don't care. I don't care. Do you care? No. Hurry, hurry, step right up. That's it. Come a little closer. Oh, I was getting worried that you'd lost your way. <laughs> this guy's about as delightful as his audio bit rate. At the night, it's my distinct pleasure to offer you one of the finest shooting galleries there ever was. I call it Rest in Pieces. Baby, you could speak up a little louder because I can't hear you over the bit crushing! What a goober head. So, this is the game. This would be a mini game in any other self respecting game, but no, it's the whole game. This is what you do you move a little cursor left and right and you shoot at targets. This is the whole game. Really pushing the power limits of the CDI. Ironically, that's probably true. So, you just shoot skeletons and tombstones stones and hammers and axes and shit. Come on guys, I am trying my damnedest to come up with things to say about this game, but here, this is it. You're seeing it. This is the game. I don't think you have a time limit. I think you just play until you run out of bullets. If you got enough points to advance, you advance to the next level. If not, it's game over. You start all over again. You know, maybe they'll put, he did okay on your tombstone. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, noodle dick. That's what it sounds like. Hey, buddy. Hey. That's the one thing I can say about this game. The sound effects are funny sometimes. Overall, not much to say. Close, but no cigar, Toad Brain. Yeah, your mom should have swallowed you, you fat bastard. Now, I said there was a second game, and it was called Phantom Express. This game has a weird premise. You apparently relive moments of your life during this ride of his. We'll have to see what they mean by that. I really don't want to relive playing Sonic 06 for the first time all over again. This round, Bobbo, you need to score this many points. 
Maybe you could put some of that in my right ear too. Thought I was going deaf for a second. So it's a rail shooter where you live out the worst parts of your life or something like that. If the worst part of your life is JPEGs running across your face. Oh, I just realized the audio is on the left side, but the sound of the gun shooting is on the right side. What the hell? And let me tell you something, for a rail shooter, this is pretty bad. You have to use the control pad to move the cursor, and it takes so damn long to move the cursor that by the time you finally aimed at something, it's gone. About all you can do is just spam the fire button and hope for the best. Car and evil, this is not. If they would have at least given you the option to use a light gun, that would be better. But as far as I've been able to tell, this game did not support a light gun, even though the CDI had one. But even if you did have a light gun, do you really want to play this? A game that yells at you and makes fun of you the whole time you play it? This kind of feels like a rail shooter game that you would find on Newgrounds. I bet you could make something very similar to this in Flash. Rip Flash. So, hey, something's fucked up with your green screen, pal. It's a Jessica Simpson? Hey, I remember her. She was a singer. She was in that Dukes of Hazard movie that was a piece of shit. But I've talked enough about Dukes of Hazard for a lifetime. Anyway, that's all I got for this one. What a bunch of nothing these Mystic Midway games are. You'd have more fun playing Dark Souls with a power glove. Hey, has anybody done that? No, but somebody beat Doom Eternal with a power glove. Hmm, maybe I should try to beat it with a light gun. Now, the next game I got for you is, uh, <laughs> it's Tetris. Now, I know you're saying, Stu, it's Tetris. What what could be so special about Tetris? Well, let's ask this black monolith hell-bent on the destruction of Earth. What secrets could it possibly hold about the universe? Oh, Tetris. Okay, fair enough. The thing that's so special about this Tetris game is this Tetris game has the best fucking aesthetic I have ever seen in a Tetris game. Listen to that chill-ass, kick-ass music. This is apparently a genre of music called New Age and was apparently composed by a man named Jim Andron. Sometime around 2016, the internet found this damn game and the soundtrack now has a big cult following. I mean, can you blame people? I mean, this has got the vaporwave thing down. This whole game just screams aesthetic. Other than that, there ain't really nothing special about it. It's just Tetris, but there is something bad about it. They managed to screw up Tetris. Now you could probably ask him, how the fuck do you screw up something as simple as Tetris? Oh, they did. Now, in a normal game of Tetris, you would push down to make the blocks go all the way down. But in this game, it's assigned to a button. And it's the button right next to the flip button. So you might accidentally hit down instead of flipping the block. Pressing a main button to go down makes absolutely no sense. And guess what down on the D-pad does? Nothing. It does nothing. But anyway, that's Tetris on the CDI. Broke-ass controls, good-ass music. Next we have the wacky world of miniature golf with Eugene Levy. Now, if you don't know who Eugene Levy is, he was a big movie star in the 80s. The main movie I remember him being in was Speed Zone, which was the third Cannonball Run movie. What is he in this game? He's a golf ball. Hey, greetings, putters. I'm Rollo the goofball. <laughs> I mean, golf ball. Really, you don't say. The miniature golf theme park that picks up where the other golf courses leave off. You're about to enter a fully enclosed, climate-controlled marvel of CDI mini-golf technology. Yes, I've seen what CDI technology can do. Well, now we have to select a character. I'm gonna be the caveman because I want to be frozen in there. The American Dream Hole. Where you get to own your own home, your own swimming pool, and your own mortgage. <laughs> a house in this economy? Okay, as long as it's not the Final Fantasy house. So here you go, here's some mini golf. So you have an option of putting left, right, or center. Now you think you just use left and right on the D-pad to select that. Well you do, but you have to hold down left or hold down right for a second or two before it will actually choose left or right. I don't know why it does that. Also, you think you would putt when things are out of the way? Common sense would tell you that when you putt and something is out 
out of the way, you would make it. But no, somehow or another, I still miss the shot even though things are clearly out of the way. I can clearly see how this game works. It's not exactly a game per se. It's a bunch of cutscenes put together. If you miss, you get the cutscene of the dog, which I seem to be getting a lot even though he's clearly out of the way when I push the button. So there's no real good way to tell when you're supposed to push the button because you would think when something's out of the way, you'll make the shot. But th th listen to me, I can't even form words. This game just defies all laws of common sense. See, that time the dog was in the way and I made it. Or burgers, anyone? I'm stuffed. Or not. Okay, let's try putting to the right. Well, fucking hell, you just can't win with this stupid ass game. I'm up to eight strokes now. I'm about to have a fucking stroke. Luckily, if you fuck up the hole enough times, <laughs> fuck up the hole, they let you skip the hole, so we actually get to see the other levels. The next one is this biker themed level, which just has these two motorcycles going back and forth. Very nice. It really does seem like pure random or pure luck whether or not you're gonna actually make the hole or make any progress. What, was that a Red Bull can? But surprisingly enough, I did actually beat this one. You ever seen an oil can bust a nut? Well, they're fucking dead. Oh, I guess not. But what's with the chicken noises? Wait, that's only two people! So the third guy died! Damn, I didn't realize mini golf was so dangerous. Here comes the only miniature golf hole with teeth! With teeth! Oh, I kill myself sometimes! If you kill yourself sometimes, you must not be very successful at it. Do you need some help? Do you need to be on something? Get this man some Prozac. Well, this is a shark one, and it's a straight shot to the hole, except for the shark, which of course is a problem. The background looks like Ganon's mouth. Ah. And again, I won this one at completely pure random. This is like one of the worst golf games I've ever played. And I've played a lot of bad golf games. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I would much rather play the Beavis and Butthead golf game. Here's one that's called Merlin's Apprentice. Merlin's Apprentice is a challenging tale of medieval sorcery in which you aspire to become apprentice to that great wizard, Merlin. Oh wow, it's Cam Clark who played Liquid Snake. Snake, my genes are magic. Now I'm very familiar with Merlin's Apprentice because there was a YouTube pooper back in the day who used to poop this a bunch. Unfortunately, they're all taken down from YouTube, but I found them. Merlin's penis is a challenging tale of medieval gayness in which you aspire to become gay or Merlin. Yet you must masturbate to Merlin to win his ass. Merlin's hole has been torn asunder. Use your dick to come in Merlin's ass. Uh, you get the idea. So basically, Merlin's Apprentice is a puzzle game, and it gives you all these kind of puzzles you gotta solve. You know, because that's what a puzzle game does. It gives you puzzles to solve. I'm trying my best, people. From the looks of it, you can set the difficulty of each individual puzzle. And even then, they're still pretty hard. Every now and then, you get cutscenes of these demon guys who pick on you. That will be sure to impress him. <laughs> Wait, whoa, hold up, hold up! This one demon dude's got a dumpy, holy shit! That needs to be the cover of Gigantic Asses. So here's our stage select screen. It gives us all these nice little options here. We can do funny symbol, funny symbol, funny symbol, funny symbol, funny symbol, or funny symbol. I think we ought to do funny symbol. Okay, I think you have to move the cursor on the dandelions or whatever these are. And my God, this is the slowest cursor in the history of man. So you just do this for a while and these little blue things tell you if you're making any progress or not. And yeah, looks like things are happening. Yeah, this is a this is a hell of a game right here. Yeah, more fun clicking stuff on a DVD menu. Actually, I would rather watch the little DVD logo move back and forth. Maybe it'll hit the corner finally. Next was this word descrambler thing, and I have no idea how you play this. It'd be easier to decipher my own shitty handwriting. I did manage to make it say something funny though. A big cum, which is something you get from about a half an hour of edging. Then there was this slide puzzle shit where you have to rearrange the shit to put the shit back together. And shit, 
fucker, this shit was shit, and I am terrible at these slide puzzle things. I hated it in Resident Evil 4, I hate it in this motherfucker. Have you ever played a game that made you feel stupid? This is what this game is doing to me. So you know what, just pretend that I won. And that was all of that game I could stand. Damn, we still got four games to look at, man. I feel like I've been doing this forever. But that's what CDI does to you, man. It drains all of the life out of your body and leaves you a dried out husk. Next, we've got Laser Lords. Ah, uh, what a nice font. The Void is in great danger, Mario. Wow, this is like the beginning of the heavy metal movie. I am the Star-Lord Zendo. I have been sent from the Interzone to enlist a mortal to confront Sarpadon. Good lord, what is with the CDI and puppet reptiles? Yo, this literally is the start of heavy metal, what the fuck? I suggest that you begin your quest on Luxor. Alright, I'll go to Luxor. Wait. Wait, this is the game? Oh, no, 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 no! This is gonna suck! I hate games that have menus to things that could easily be bound to buttons. Alright, go down the lat. No, go down the ladder! Go to- don't- Gah! The problem is this damn input lag or whatever's going on, where you have to hold down the whatever direction of the D-pad you're going before you actually get any input out of it. You have to hold it down and wait a second or two. And this is one of the worst walk cycles I've ever seen. This is so slow and sluggish. Ew. You know, with the bad jumping, the bad walk cycle, the horrible controls, it makes me think, is this a British game? Did they get some Commodore 64 developer to make this game because this feels like crap to play. I'm only on the second screen of the game and I already hate it. This game needs to go back to where it came from, back to where it came from. Oh look, I actually made some progress. Here's an NPC or something to talk to. What's this? Another star man! By Sisis, where is the hero promised by prophecy? Hey, get the fuck out of here! Don't slam the door! Park the car in the yard! This woman sounds straight out of fucking Boston! And all wearing the same stupid costume! Turn the car off! I wish I could show you more, I really do, but I didn't get very far in this game. I found this guy who was blocking my path, found a couple more screens, and that was it. I couldn't figure out where the hell I was supposed to go. It's a shame, too, because I looked up the cutscenes for this game. They're pretty fucking wild. Lunchtime. <laughs> Like human. Uh, okay, fair enough. Chaos Control! Chaos Control is an extremely shitty, extremely loud rail shooter with some of the worst 3D graphics you've ever seen on a CDI. Now don't kid yourself, of course this is all full motion video. If a CDI tried to render a 3D model, it would turn into a molten puddle of metal and plastic. One thing that makes this game annoying is there's a guy steadily saying, Good shot, fire, fire, good shot, fire, good shot, fire, fire. We're not playing with the Konami laser scope here. Man, look at them graphics. The best only 1992 CGI could give you. CGI on the CDI, how about that? You know what else is great about this game? One life, no continues. You lose all your life bar, it's game over, start the whole game all over. Man, how hard was it to grasp the idea of lives and continues back then? I guess some game developers were still in that arcade mindset. When you're sitting at your house playing a video game on the couch, you know, you would kind of like it if you could start back over at least a little bit close to where you were before. But no, this game's like, you do it or die, bitch. And if you die, the whole world gets destroyed, and that's on you. You did that. Have to play a whole damn game with just one damn life. Jeez. You'd have an easier time balancing BBs on your head while riding a unicycle. Now we've gone through all these shitty CDI games and I know the whole time we've been doing this you've been going, Stu, I don't give a fuck about any of these stupid CDI games nobody's ever heard of. I could give less of a shit. Give me what I want. 
Give me what I want to see. And yes, I know, I know what you're all here for. I know why you clicked on a CDI video, because you want to see that game. Okay, fine. For fuck's sake. You guys just can't be patient with me. But fine. We'll do it. We will play... Voyeur. I bet you weren't expecting me to say that. Oh, and I see why it's called Voyeur. Oh, my, 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 my. Whew. It's one of them games. Put these on. Oh, God. What kind of game is this? This is a kinky fucking game. Oh, fuck, she's gonna shoot him in the dick. Oh, boy. So what's going on is you're spying on this house through a video camera and you're trying to get video evidence to convict the owner of the house of some underhanded shit. So you gotta look around this JPEG of a house and find any activity going on, which will tell you by this icon. Most of it's just sitting here watching videos, but sometimes it's audio only. Then I come back to this house and there's this frightened child inside me that really needs you. There is a catch though, your camcorder has a battery life and when it runs out, the time advances. And as you can imagine, yes, some fucked up shit does happen. Some of it I can't show. Come on, fuck like a dog. No! Yeah, it gets pretty wild at parts. What it all boils down to though is this guy in the suit, his company dumped toxic waste on a third world country's village. Oh, we have no. An entire village was contaminated. Dad, people died. <laughs> Jeff, what do you want from me? I can't bring back the village. I'm not talking about bringing back the village. I'm talking about you sweeping it under the rug. What kind of president would do that? Just about any in recent memory. That's a bra moment. So I send the tape to the police, and this happens. Question mark? Oh, okay. So, well, that's Voyeur, I guess. Now, I know you've gone through this whole video and was like, all this shit, and he'd never played Hotel Mario. Fine, fine. We'll play Hotel Mario. God, I have watched this cutscene so many times in my life, I know every bit of this by heart. The princess to invite us over for a picnic. Gay Luigi? I hope she made lots of spaghetti. Luigi, look. You gotta help. Gotta help. Gotta help. If you need instructions, die. I just realized this footage is missing something. There we go. This is another weird game where the music is on the left side and the sound effects are on the right side. I don't know what that's about. Well, you know what? To my surprise, Mario controls pretty well. You have a lot of control over your jump, so the controls don't feel bad. I can say that about it. But if you truly never seen Hotel Mario before, and if you haven't, what's wrong with you? Have you been living under a rock? Basically, all you do in this game is shut doors. You ride elevators, go and shut doors. You ride elevators, shut doors. Maybe stomp on a Goomba or two. But that's your whole plan in this game. You have to shut doors. And to be honest with you, it's not terrible. It's okay. But that's all it is really, just okay. If this would have been an arcade game, this would have made sense. But this was supposed to be the console's definitive Mario game. And boy, it ain't much. What really sucks is when you jump, sometimes you can hit something that's above you. And it also took me a while to figure out these wigglers. I thought you were supposed to jump on their sections on their back, but no, you're supposed to jump on their head. One thing I found interesting is when you jump on a Koopa, it doesn't spawn a shell, it just goes away. Also, if you walk all the way to the end of the platform, you'll fall down. So there's seven Koopa hotels, but each stage seems to have, I think, about 10 stages? So that's 70 levels you have to get through. Who would play 70 levels of this game? Oh my god. You know how many levels of this game I played? I played four. You know why I played four levels? Because the end emulator doesn't like this game. It freezes up at the score. Every time I would try to play this game, it would freeze up at the score. And nobody on the internet has a workaround for it. So that's all of Hotel Mario I could play. I'm sorry. That's just how it goes. If you want to complain to somebody, tell the devs who do same CDI to get off their butts and fix this shit. But for now, that's all I got. Next time, I'll be playing the f- Ugh, these games. But either way, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry it took so long to come out, but it's finally out, and that's what's important. 
And hey, we're going to be doing some changes to the Patreon soon. Soon we're going to have a $20 tier. Now, I know you're saying, Stu, what the hell could you do for me that I would pay you $20 every time you make a video? Well, my wonderful artist, Kippy, who does my stills and my thumbnails, will draw your original character, and it will be featured at the end of every video. That's right, your original character on my show at the end of every video. So if you want to sign up for that, it'll be on Patreon very soon, so keep an eye on that. Until next time, everybody, I'm Stuart K. Riley, and this is Working Man Games. I'll see y'all in the CDI Zelda video.